Hello and welcome to the Algebras. In this lecture, lecture number 12, we will talk about root systems. Let's start with a reminder of the properties of root space decomposition for a semi-simple finite dimensional complex Lie algebra G. So let G be a semi-simple finite dimensional complex Lie algebra. Then in the previous lecture we saw that it has a root space decomposition, which means that it can be written as a direct sum of its Cartan subalgebra H, and then the direct sum of the root subspaces G sub alpha, where alpha is a linear functional on H and belongs to what is called the set of roots of the Lie algebra G. In the previous lecture, we established various properties of the set phi. Let's recall them. First of all, phi is finite and it does not contain the zero element. The set phi spans the dual space to the Cartan as a vector space. For each alpha in phi, the only scalar multiples of alpha which belong to phi are plus and minus alpha. For each pair of elements alpha and beta in phi, the evaluation of beta at the canonical Cartan element H sub alpha associated to alpha is an integer. And for any pair of elements alpha and beta in phi, the expression beta minus the scalar multiple of alpha given by the scalar beta of H alpha is an element of phi. So today we will use these properties to define axiomatically a mathematical construct called the root system. We will define root systems in the following setup. We start with a finite dimensional Euclidean vector space, that is a finite dimensional real vector space with an inner product, a positive definite symmetric bilinear form on this vector space. For each non-zero vector v in our Euclidean vector space E, we define the corresponding reflection S sub v as the linear operator given by the following formula. The value of S sub v on x is x minus a multiple of v given by the scalar, 2 times the scalar product of x and v divided by the scalar product of v and v. Directly from this formula, it is easy to see that the value of s sub v at v is equal to minus v. So if you plug in v here, then the scalar product of v and v in the numerator and denominator cancels, and we get v minus 2v, which is minus v. And also that the value of s sub v at x is equal to x for any x which is orthogonal to v. This is because if x is orthogonal to v, then the scalar product of x and v is zero, so the second term just disappears. And the second property is that S of v is an orthogonal linear operator, which means that it preserves the scalar product. The scalar product of S of v x and S of v y is equal to the scalar product of x and y for all x, y, and e. So this property follows from property number one, since property number one implies that S sub v has an eigenbasis consisting of orthonormal vectors and the eigenvalues in that eigenbasis are plus and minus one. It will be useful to denote by the angle bracket of x and v the scalar two times the scalar product of x and v divided by the scalar product of v and v. And directly from the definition one should be warned that the angle bracket is not symmetric and it is only linear in x. It is not linear in v. So now we are ready to define the root systems. A subset phi of our Euclidean vector space E is called the root system in E, provided that it has the following properties. First of all, it is finite. It does not contain the zero element in E. It spans E as a vector space. For any element alpha in phi, the only scalar multiples of alpha which belong to phi are plus and minus alpha. For any element alpha in phi, the corresponding reflection S sub alpha sends phi to itself. And finally, for any pair of elements alpha and beta in phi, the corresponding angle bracket of alpha and beta is an integer. Elements of a root system are called roots, and the dimension of the corresponding vector space E is usually called the rank of the root system. Let's give a very easy example. Consider as E the one-dimensional real vector space R with a standard scalar product given by the multiplication of the L. Consider the subset phi of E, which consists of plus and minus 2. Claim 
Phi is a root system in E, and of course it's of rank 1 because E is one dimension. The first four properties are clear. So phi is finite by definition, it has two elements, it does not contain zero element by definition, and it spans E because it has a non-zero element and E has dimension 1. And the only scalar multiple of elements in phi are plus and minus elements. So the first four properties are clear. The fifth property, phi is stable under reflections with respect to the elements in phi. But this is very easy to see because the reflection with respect to a non-zero element in one-dimensional vector space is just the sign change. And by definition, phi is stable under the sign change. And finally, the final axiom that the angle bracket of two elements should be an integer follows from a direct computation. So we always have two times the scalar product of plus minus 2 and plus minus 2 divided by the scalar product of plus minus 2 and plus minus 2. And if you compute in all cases, we will get 2 or minus 2, which is an integer. It follows that the vectors plus and minus 2 form a root system in the one-dimensional real Euclidean space. This example can be generalized to a standard family of root systems as follows. Consider the real vector space R upper n as an Euclidean vector space with a standard scalar product, so the sum of xi times yi, and the standard basis E, consisting of elements E1 and so on, Em. Inside this vector space, which we denote by E tilde, consider the subspace E, which will be the space where we will have our root system, which consists of all elements in E tilde, having the property that the sum of the coordinates of this vector is equal to zero. Now we can consider the set phi, and this is the subset of E, which consists of all vectors of the form Ei minus Ej, so EI and EJ are elements in the standard basis. I and J are indices from 1 to N. And we assume that I and J are different to avoid zero. Claim this phi is a root system of E and it is of rank N minus 1 because E has dimension N minus 1. Again, the first four axioms of root systems are clear. Phi is clearly finite, it does not contain the zero element, and it clearly spans the set E. Note that phi does not span the set E tilde. And the only scalar multiples of an element in phi are plus and minus this element. This is also clear. So if you have Ei minus Ej, phi also contains Ej minus Ei, but no other scalar multiples of Ei minus Ej by definition. So the fifth axiom can be established by direct computation. If we apply the reflection with respect to Ei minus Ej to the element Ea minus Eb, then we have to consider six different cases. So if Ij and Ab do not have common elements, then we just get Ea minus Eb because these two vectors are orthogonal. If these two vectors coincide, then from the observation a couple of slides ago, we know that we will get minus the element Ea minus Eb. So we get Eb minus Ea. So what remains is to consider four cases where the intersection of Ij and Ab consists of one element. And then we can directly compute that if intersection of Ij and Ab consists of the element i, which coincides with A, then the element Ea in the expression will be just substituted by the element Eg, and we obtain that the outcome will be Eg minus Eb, which is again the root by definition, and similarly in all other cases. To prove the final axiom, we just know that the square of the lengths of each root is 2 by definition, so the scalar product of alpha and alpha is 2. So in the expression for the angle bracket of alpha and beta, 2 in the numerator cancels with 2 in the denominator, and what is left is uh, just the scalar product of alpha and beta, and this is clearly an integer because all our elements in 5 have integer coefficients. So this proves that this set phi is a root system in our Euclidean vector space E of dimension n minus 1. And now a least theoretic example. If we look at the axioms of the root system, 
and the properties of the set of roots in the root space decomposition for a semi-simple complex finite dimensional Lie algebra, we see that they basically correspond. Therefore, we claim that the set phi of all roots of our semi-simple complex finite dimensional Lie algebra G with respect to a fixed part ensemble algebra H is a root system, but now we have to be a little bit careful where, because we need a, an Euclidean vector space. So it's a root system in the real linear span of itself, and the scalar product is a restriction of the killing form to this vector space, which is defined also using the identification of the Cartan subalgebra with its dual using the killing form. So this identification is possible because the killing form is non degenerate. So the main thing to prove here is actually to check that the restriction of the killing form to our real space the real linear span of all roots is a positive definite form. So let us choose a basis in G by choosing one non-zero vector in each root subspace and any basis of the Cartan subalgebra. With respect to this basis, the value of the killing form at the pair H H prime of two elements from the Cartan subalgebra is given as a sum over all roots of the product of the evaluation of the root alpha at the element H and the evaluation of the root alpha at the element H prime. This is because the killing form is defined as a trace of the adjoint operator of H composed with the adjoint operator of H prime. And our chosen basis is an eigenbasis for H and H prime because these are elements of the Cartan subalgebra. So the corresponding in diagonal entries are exactly these evaluations of alpha of H respectively H prime. So we have two diagonal matrices which we multiply and then take the trace and the trace is exactly this sum. Now we recall the property that the evaluation of alpha at the element H beta, the canonical element associated to the corresponding root beta, is an integer. From this it follows that the evaluation of alpha at each element H from the real span of phi is a real number. So in particular the value of the killing form at h and h, where h is in the real span of phi, is a sum of squares of real numbers, and thus is a non-negative real number. And this value is zero if and only if alpha of h is equal to zero for all alpha in phi, and this means that h must be zero. So this proves that the restriction of the killing form to the real span of phi is a positive definite form. So with this in mind, the axioms R1 to R6 follow fairly directly from the properties of the root space decomposition, which we recalled earlier in the lecture. As soon as we notice that these integer numbers, alpha of h beta, by definition, they are equal to the value of the killing form at the element c sub alpha and h beta. And the element h beta, as we saw in the previous lectures, can be written as 2 c sub beta divided by the value of the killing form at c sub beta, c sub beta. So Taking out the scalar, we can write alpha of h beta as two times the killing form of c sub alpha c sub beta divided by the killing form of c sub beta c sub beta. And this is exactly the angle bracket between the roots alpha and beta. So this proves that the angle bracket is an integer and completes the proof of the fact that the set of all roots of the Lie algebra G is actually a root system in the real span of these roots. So our aim is to classify all simple finite dimensional Lie algebras and as a major step will be a classification of root systems. And this classification will be given up to the notion of isomorphism of root systems, defined as follows. A root system phi1 in the Euclidean space E1 is said to be isomorphic to a root system phi2 in the Euclidean space E2, if there is an invertible linear map F from E1 to E2, which maps the root system phi1 to the root system phi2, preserving the angle bracket between all roots. And our aim, which we hope to do in the next lecture, is to classify all root systems up to isomorphs. So here is a picture which gives us an answer for root systems of rank 2. So the proof is postponed until the next lecture. So in rank 2, we have four different root systems, which are depicted here 
in the usual geometric way inside the Euclidean plane. So we have a root system consisting of four vectors, of six vectors, of eight vectors, and of 12 vectors. And it is very easy to see from these pictures that these are root systems. They all are finite, they don't contain zero, they span the vector space, and the main property is they are stable with respect to reflection. So for example, if you take this root system, and this is a vector, then there is a orthogonal hyperplane the line which is orthogonal to this vector and of course the reflection of this picture with respect to that line gives us the picture back and similarly we can see this for all other examples a small simplification of our aim for the next lecture to classify all root systems will be that we will classify what is called irreducible root systems the notion of irreducible root systems is motivated by the following procedure which produces in a very easy way a new root system from some old root systems assume that we have a root system phi 1 in an euclidean vector space e1 and a root system phi 2 in an euclidean vector space e2 then the disjoint union of these root systems, realized as elements in the direct sum E1 plus E2, forms a root system in this Euclidean space E1 plus E2. And this is usually called the direct sum of the root systems phi1 and phi2. A root system phi is called irreducible, provided that it is not isomorphic to a non-trivial direct sum of two root systems. So, for example, in rank 2, the first example, which is called A1 times A1, is a reducible root system, because we can write our vector space R2 as a direct sum of R1 and R1, and this root system is a direct sum of the root systems in the corresponding components. The remaining three examples give us irreducible root systems of rank 2. So, in rank 2, only the first example, which we saw, is reducible, and three others are irreducible. And and the main aim for the next lecture is to classify all irreducible root systems. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the lecture.